Hey kids, it's uh, Coca back with another Dope Talk, a short podcast for hosting people with dope talents. Uh, today we've got the Lord of Internet Culture and Memedom, uh, Quite. You want to say hi, buddy? Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Quite. Yeah, <laughs> uh, an interesting person. I actually got introduced to you, I believe, uh, through Nick Nocturne. He was talking about you about a year ago, and I had no idea what the fuck was going on. I just saw your like persona, and you kind of had that sort of like edge lord look to you. I didn't really get around <laughs> to checking out your content. I mean, is is isn't that kind of what you go for, or like what what's the whole getup about exactly? Because like for anybody who's not initiated to this boy, he's he's like Antifa light, but also like. Uh, I- <laughs> It's not a getup. It's just me. I'm a floating hoodie, sentient floating hoodie just, with prosthetic legs. Oh, prosthetic legs. Okay, they're not so, real. So, they're uh, fake. They're, they're, where did you get the legs from, though? Uh, not not your business. Mind it. Gotcha. So, with with that though, how would you kind of describe your your content that you aggregate? Because you've been doing YouTube for like about a year or two, correct? Uh, yeah, in the format that I do it now. Uh, been doing it for like two, three, four years. Um, but okay, <laughs> but like, yeah, 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 like in the f- f- content style I do now, it's been like two years. I'm a commentary channel. Uh, so like people like, um, uh, people like Pyrocynical, all that stuff, like where we talk about like memes, trends and all that sort of stuff, whatever's going on in YouTube or the internet. Um, and just kind of give like opinions and thoughts on it and just try and crack jokes, uh, on whatever topics we're talking about, that kind of thing. Yeah, but I've noticed you have a heavy emphasis on uh, emphasis emphasis on memes specifically, like kind of like uh, internet culture in in almost going into rating it, which which I don't think I've seen a lot of that sort of content in particular. Like with Pyro, he's more interested in I would say the whole YouTube scape, and then like talking about like things going on like uh, with with culture and all that stuff. But you're more interested in talking about shit posts. I think is that is that a good description? Uh, yeah, there was definitely, like, a long stretch where, like, I was very meme-centric. Like, I became, like, a lot of people would call me, like, the new behind the meme because I'd, like, delve into meme origins like a fucking pleb. But, yeah, there was, like, a long stretch where, like, I was just completely, like, enveloped in shit posting. And, like, what I'd do is, like, I'd, uh, at the end of every month, like, in the start of the next month, I'd, like, take all the memes from the last month and just, like, review them. It was, like, pretty fun format and it, like, allowed u- user interaction. But then occasionally, like, I'd give... In, or like uh, whole memes their own video and shit and uh, it would just be like a showcase of like some of the ones that made me laugh and also like my thoughts on them and like where the whole thing came from and whatnot but like I've kind of transitioned away from that a little bit and more into doing some of the YouTube scape stuff and trying to do more uh, I don't want to say Cody Co-esque but like Cody Co inspired kind of things where it's just like reaction commentary so what kind of got you into that though because you said you were doing youtube for a bit before you really started to pick up with with your current format like where did you start specifically so um i actually got into the community like in i want to say mid 2016 through that uh through watching uh nile pyrocynical yeah um i got in i found the wider community through him because he had like a week where he just featured a bunch of creators on his channel because he went on vacation so i just started watching like a bunch of them met a lot of people through discord and um i i kind of uh didn't want to show my face at the time so that was like or not that there is a face because this is how i look obviously but um (laughs) but i i just kind of like that became my persona kind of meme and through that, I just kind of ran with it and kept it up through the those years until like 2018 when it started picking up and I, when I uploaded more frequently. Because in 2016, 2017, I wasn't uploading very regularly, so it never really had a chance to gain any traction. So you, you're just kind of saying that was sort of like your your online bio thing that you did. It was, it was the edgy thing that ended up picking up and you kind of had to keep running with it. Yeah, I mean, I, honestly, I don't, I don't think like being edgy was ever the intention. I think... It's just all like what it's been a part of my humor for a while, right? But yeah. if it if it ever fades out naturally, it fades out. It's like not edgy by intention. It's just edgy because I guess that's what appeals to me at the current moment. If I find like more thought out and <laughs> actually well put together humor funnier in the near future, then I guess that I'll go for that. So why why the surgery mask though specifically like with the hoodie? Is is there anything that was appealing about that to you, or is there anything that you were kind of like thinking about, or was it just like this is what I like at the time right now? You know. So um, the, those who used to watch me or like way back in the day might know that I used to have like a, a turtleneck hoodie where in to cover my <laughs> um quote unquote face, which there is nothing of, uh, I'd pull up that turtleneck, but it was super muffled and the audio was scuffed. 
So after trying like 40 different microphones, including like a lapel, not 40, that's more, it's more like four, but like including like a lapel, a shotgun, uh, holding the blue snowball like I do in videos sometimes now, I eventually like just decided I'll get a thinner mask and that's where the surgical mask came from. So it just kind of happened out of necessity. Yeah, it's just like your kind of way of evolving and working out. I actually have this whole thing that I was uh, I was with Fred Nudson over at another convention, and he got like really, really sick, right? I think it was like a strep throat, like, but it was like a wild strain of it. We all ended up going off to some uh, shitty ER. It was like a urgent care center, and we all had to wear these shitty masks. We were like wearing lollipops through them because we like poked holes because they had those, you know, the <laughs> the dummies they make you fucking uh, eat basically at these things because they're like, oh, this is your one consolation for being at the shitty center. So we had this whole picture of us just with these fucking shitty surgery masks on, hanging out like doing the prayer gang while this boy over here is like suffering. So I kind of, I kind of get you in some some sense of it has that aesthetic to it. Yeah, no, they look sick. Like, what can you say? <laughs> no, I mean it's like like what the fuck? It's it's got a certain like presence to it. I think it's also the same thing with like hiding your face. It gives a little bit of like that I- animity or uh, that that kind of mysterious look to it so i don't blame you for for starting off with that or at least evolving in that direction would you say though that you uh that you you definitively want to stay with this or do you think in the future you might end up changing like or going in a different direction i've given it a lot of thought but honestly like as it is i don't know near future i don't think i'll be changing much because i do enjoy my privacy quite a bit but um i don't know i've thought about it like do i want to like change it up that drastically and i think at some point it's kind of inevitable but i don't know when that thing would be i gotcha so what exactly you said you kind of met a lot of these big players at the time and you were you were getting into the feel for like the whole youtube scene what what really got you interested in doing youtube specifically oh that getting in youtube specifically like that was like toddlerhood like that was when when youtube first started when i was a small small child i saw ryan higa and that's all i ever wanted to do since oh my god like <laughs> oh I, god. I saw ryan higa as a kid and i was like I, I loved it and i never stopped watching youtube and i just always kept making stuff because i always wanted to do youtube so you just kept saying to yourself like oh there's gonna be me someday like i i definitely without a doubt want to be up there with with the likes of <laughs> ryan higa. I, I, I don't even know if i i don't think i told myself this is what i want to do someday or this is what i'm gonna do someday it was just i really liked doing it my whole life so i just never stopped and i think i was doing it before i knew it could like be any sort of career path like i just yeah, enjoyed it so much and it, i was very fortunate that it turned out like that you know it's the same way with uh, with doing art for me specifically. It was like I'd been doing it for I think since about 2007, which is actually when YouTube, I guess, really started to pop up. Um, yes. It it just kind of felt right. I was hanging out in a lot of those communities. I had a lot of free time because I was a dumb kid. And so, of course, I'm going to sit around posting things and doing the shit I like. It's crazy how that sort of pans out into into uh, actual careers sometimes because you take your, your passions and turn it into something that's like actually tangible. Also great because nowadays the Internet kind of gives you the agency to to publish for yourself and kind of become your own um I guess agent uh, with with this stuff. YouTube is is a great scene. Also, <laughs> YouTube has a lot of problems, but I, I think it's really cool that it's like if you have the competency for like video editing and you know sitting down and you have the right uh, equipment, you have the possibility of actually making a full blown career out of it. Yeah, yeah, just like some kid in the room, like or some like it's not it's not. I'm very lucky to be one of the few who kind of got to do what they wanted to do as a kid as an adult, like. I'm very fortunate in that aspect and I'm thankful for that every day. But it's like, absolutely. It's, uh, with that though, um, just being able to, some kid in your room though, like can be ca- can like capture the eyes and ears of like millions of people. Not, I'm not one of those people, but not yet at least, but just the idea that it's possible at all is really intriguing to me. And I love that. So do you know exactly what, what got your channel, like the momentum it, it started to gain? Like, like w- at what point did it like really turn for you? There was this one video I made that's my most popular to date, but that started popping off and then a bunch of videos popped off as a result of it. And I was able to build off of that. It was this video I made on uh, content cops. Like, are you familiar with iDubs and all that? Oh, absolutely. Who the fuck isn't? Yeah, <laughs> I, I made a video called Why You Can't Wait Against the Content Cop. And that got like, yeah. uh, and I got, it's at, sitting at like 2 million views right now. Holy shit. Um, and that was the video that like really blew me up. Like it, it, I posted it in like late 2017. And then like four months later, for whatever reason, it absolutely exploded. And then I was a, and then other videos I made at the time started blowing up as a result of that. And also like my whole channel just kind of saw 
uh, whenever I was making it at a time getting put into recommended, which was which uh, is kind of how it works. You know, it's, yeah. it's like you get you get into the algorithm and suddenly like, bam, 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 you're actually showing up on people's feeds. Yeah. I mean, sometimes all it takes is one, but other times it's like you can be like a one hit wonder. Like if you don't bounce off it, right, like you, you can you maybe you'll have that one, two, three million view video, but you might never make something else that like gains traction again. Well, absolutely. It's the same way with memes where like if you make a if you make a really good one or for instance, um, most times people aren't going to come back to you specifically for that content because it's like it's it's sort of goes into the ether and nobody really gives a shit about the source. But if you give that impression to people um, when when you make that content, like specifically with videos, I think it's a lot easier than having a meme. I don't think anybody's really famous for for that stuff specifically. Um, You get that kind of traction going because it's like consistency. That's that's one of the biggest things that people tend to talk to when it comes about content creation it's like showing people that you can keep putting out content with the same kind of quality you know behind it it's just like you said making sure that you're on the ball when that shit happens it's Uh, like yeah putting like a video you make ending up in recommended is like it has more chance to stick with people because they come for the topic but they have you have more of a chance to inject your own personality into said thing uh, which gives more of a people of a chance to stick around for you instead of just the topic that you're covering so I guess on that note, what exactly would you say you think sticks about your personality that people keep coming back for? Uh, just judging off of what people have said about me, they uh, my videos are pretty high energy. Like there, a lot of people have said that like they're almost ADHD in a way that I help them with that. Like despite having like limited facial expressions, that like the emotion like just kind of comes through because the personality kind of bursts at the seams, kind of meme. Not yeah, that, I definitely caught that yeah, when not, I was not, watching not a lot like, of your videos. Missing, sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Not that I necessarily. I'm you. Not that I necessarily have like a better personality than anybody else. It's just really loud instead of like as opposed to understated. And but like a lot of people say that like that seems kind of more tied to the videos. Like in in a setting like this, they say I'm a lot more laid back, by, or that I sound completely different. So I think that is part of that. Like I'm good at keeping people's attention to some degree. Yeah, without a doubt, I would say there's there's a huge difference between talking to you like this versus hearing you in a video because you have a very high energy to you. It's like every time you're like almost screaming, but it's not like a bad kind of screaming. It's like a, addressing your audience excitedly. I guess I guess it's also comes with the territory. I mean, you do. You, I'm guessing you love talking about the stuff that you, you go on about in your videos, like the memes and stuff. What exactly like draws you to that content with memes specifically? Like what gets you excited talking about that stuff? Uh, I, f- I don't know, like, just the part, part, one part of memes that's, like, really confounds me to this day is just how they've warped so much. Like, I made a whole video trying to analyze how memes got to this twisted uh, and nuked and deep fried and ex- horribly bizarre state that they're in. And uh, a lot of that just came from, like, trying to understand, like, the, I guess, like, the ideas and thinking behind why we find certain things funny. And of course, I failed miserably because I'm not a fucking philosopher or whatever. But I think just that kind of thing keeps me intrigued. And because I'm stuck in that same cycle of finding these horribly morbid and abstract things funny. It's like trying to understand the psychology behind it, I guess, of what exactly makes memes funny that that interest you, right? Yeah, in a way that and also like at a very surface level, I just think they're funny a lot of the time. So I talk about them. (laughs) Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, who the fuck doesn't enjoy? Yeah, I, a good feel, I meme feel like that's that. the big one. Like, without trying to sound like super smart or verbose, that's definitely the big one. I just think they're cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like it's it's interesting. Like, I always always tend to think about this. I was looking at like uh, the whole idea. Like, I mean, memes are all patterns, right? They have this concept of uh, something that can keep transcending a certain meaning. It's it's the idea of showing someone basically through an image, hey, this is a concept of a feeling that you have at some point, and this is me trying to fucking put like an image to that. I I think it's funny because these things, like you say, keep kind of refrying themselves to a point where it doesn't really matter what the original like uh, concept was. For instance, with Lost, you know, it's a stupid comic, you know, uh, that that was made some forever ago. This was this was probably funny back in like the early two thousands, and somehow it it found new life. And people are still finding patterns. I think the most ridiculous thing I saw recently was this uh, image of Stonehenge, and someone's like, "What does it mean? What is all the purpose behind this? Why would people do this?" And then somebody cropped it, and there's just the fucking stones making a Lost pattern, and I'm like losing my goddamn mind. Because people people tend to find these things and they're just like, here's something that that can consistently be shown. And for some reason, you have an instant reaction to it. You know, you ever heard of r slash Doge lore? Mm -mm. Uh, So 
this meme's a little. It's been around for a while at this point, so its uh, freshness is its freshness is a little up for debate. But you do remember <laughs> the original Doge image, right? Yeah, of course. So people have like it started out as like being repurposed. Like you would see the Doge. Uh, it would be pictured as like this kind of disgruntled figure who was the husband of this uh, Karen character who had sta- taken the kids and trapped the Doge and um whatever uh, meme format that it was stuck in. Uh, so if it, you if somebody made the Doge in Minecraft, you'd take a screenshot of that, put some impact fun on it, then like Karen, you you horrible wench, release me from this Minecraft game at once. And now like on r slash doge lore they've taken it a step further and now there's various characters based off the original doge image and they create whole story arcs based off of doge and but it's been going on for ages and it's at like the end of its life cycle all this happened in the space of like a couple months these things die fast but like they find new life Uh, yeah and it's one way i've kind of like described like memes to people like who are Maybe, like, not as deep into the de- degeneracy as I am is, like, <coughs> memes in its entire life cycle is, like, a language. Because to understand a lot of, like, the humor that happens now uh, requires, like, a foundation of, like, early, like, advice animals, rage comics. Like, having some subconscious understanding of that to understand the comedy behind a lot of what's happening now. Like, it can be learned, but it's easiest to understand when you absorbed it younger. So, like, in, like... All these things laid in on top of each other. It's kind of like a language. Yeah, it's it's like no, you're you're right. It's uh, I was watching a video also about conveyance and video game language, and someone talking about what it's like for someone to basically not understand how to play games based based on like per past experience and they they came to the conclusion that it's really frustrating <laughs> when you have no actual experience because all these concepts of like health bars and all this other shit like stamina health um. Like, just even jumping with certain, like, uh, patterns. It's stuff that people don't instantly understand. So I think it's harder for people to get into memes unless they've been on the internet scene for a little bit longer, which is why I think uh, adults tend to have a problem connecting to anything else other than, like, these shitty, like, minion, like, you know, fucking text blurbs on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. Because, like, it's, like, so Facebook surface level. <laughs> and, but, like, even those have become a part of the meme lexicon, if you will, where people will deep fry those <laughs> and then put on layers of meta irony on top of those shits to make them into like t- even twist versions of themselves i'm sorry the meme lexicon that's fucking brilliant uh- <laughs> <coughs> i probably stole that from somewhere i don't remember oh no i'm sure i'm sure like you know it, it, it all comes from from different places as long as you're not being you know a fucking dickhead about it i think it's fine that's my specialty well, you know, branding, that's that's all it really is at the end of the day. And I think I think you have a really excellent sense of that. You know, it's it's probably why why you're up there with with uh, other other YouTube commenters and such. Well, thank you. That's that's very flattering. Thank you. Oh, no, no, I just <laughs> it's good stuff, man. Like, I'm, I'm glad you're around. I would say uh, so you sound very passionate about this subject. Um what kind of keeps you going with it? I, I just like I watch your videos and the amount of stuff that you go through per video. It, it's like absolutely nuts. Like I can't even imagine like what kind of crazy fucking spy setup you have for like sitting down and just following memes like like uh, on a day to day basis. You have like a whole little team or something. <laughs> I, I don't have a team, but it's like w- w- like I find memes like usually just naturally like I'll be on Twitter like just browsing it leisurely and then like i'll see something and be like oh that could be some and then usually like the history like the somebody else has probably already done the legwork like there's this website know your meme which is it breaks down the origins of memes and shit and it's really useful for that kind of thing but it, it law be truth be told like it can burn you out like if you go through my recent videos you won't really find as many dedicated uh like meme videos or like and i've kind of put that um meme review series on hold because i'm trying to like figure out how to incorporate that into streams instead but uh it, it does like i feel like it does have a shelf life to some degree you can only do it for so long before you have to take a break well yeah it's the same thing with any other content like uh like with with the art scene for me specifically i have to fucking sit down and, and realize there's only so many times i can do the same thing over and over before it kind of gets stale not only for me but for other people watching so you kind of have to find ways to vary your content not not to like a crazy you know different range but at least to to find ways to kind of give breath i mean breath is always important between uh between big important things on on your uh 
I would say schedule for for any kind of content creator, just being able to give people like kind of an idea of, oh, this isn't the only thing I'm going to be able to get. It's like why, you know, fucking iDubs doesn't drop the content cops every other second because he wants to make sure that they're good versus just like, let me keep cranking out the one thing that I know people absolutely love my channel for. Yeah. So in in that case, though, with with this like a uh, with, with your video process, would you say that you actively sit down looking for memes like like on a regular basis, or would you say that's kind of like it just happens for you and you're like, all right, this is kind of something I want to talk about today, I guess. Uh, I think less with memes and more like topics because I cover like a lot of shit on my channel. Like I, I do cover like YouTube scape ship. I use a lot of times I'll try and find like weird videos to just react to that aren't necessarily memes. They just intrigue me or whatnot and i want to make some jokes okay, about so it but yeah like I, you're saying splitting off into the whole con commenter a, scene. a lot of times it comes across you, you come across it naturally like you'll just be doing your usual thing on reddit or youtube or twitter and you'll just find something uh well, by pure accident and then like you'll make a note of it for later sweet so you just kind of like sit down and you you get into like researching yeah. the topic and you kind of find out whether or not it's worth talking about you know and bringing your own flavor to <laughs> The issue with memes is you can't really look for them because they are in and out so fast. You will see them as they blow up and you have to make your – if you're going to cover it, you need to cover it as it's blowing up because the shelf life isn't long on those things. So would you say there's any particular snags within the process of making videos like when you're talking about this sort of stuff? Is there anything that kind of comes up that you're like, oh, crap, I can't really keep going with this? Um. I gotta give it 10 minutes. Sometimes there's, it's hard to find enough, but usually, like, you just, t that means you have to dig deeper. Cause there's always more to something than, like, you think. There's always something to make there, whether it's more jokes, more information to find, more things to talk about, but there's always something there that, like, adds content that's worthwhile, I think. With 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 the scene, you were talking about some of the other content creators that that you've been in contact with, including like Pyro and like Sorrow and a, a, a few others. How, how has that kind of, like, I'd say, uh, shaped your experience uh doing doing the whole youtube scene would you say it's like you know been interesting like trying to collaborate with other content creators has it like shaped the way your content works now uh i'd, I'd say like um well i i watched nile before i was like mates with him but it's like with a lot of that i feel like i'm shaped by some of the people i surround myself with but most of the people i collaborate with i collaborate with first and foremost because they're friends or like because yeah. i know them and i feel like it's shaped that and that i feel like i built like worthwhile relationships with people who i care about Absolutely. Feel, yeah, that's, I feel like that's, that's the, huge the best part. part about it. Yeah, I mean, like, it's it's great because, like, when you start to make this network of friends, it's, like, less about, like, I guess, who you know and, and how you're kind of showing them off, but more about, like, the valuable networking that you're making and the people that actually end up being really chill. A lot of the people I've actually ha ended up having on the show <laughs> ended up being <laughs> really close friends of mine, including Nick. Um, we ended up going on a road trip, uh, surprisingly enough, after, like, I think a few months after I had him on. It was, like, uh, across the United States over to Denver. It was a wild, wild time, but it's, like, cool because you end up meeting these people who, who end up, like, I guess, being worthwhile, like, long-lasting friends, and, and that's, like, some of the best part about i guess uh content creation is you just meet some really excellent wonderful people yeah uh, also some funny. shitty ones too <laughs> <laughs> absolutely but they're they're a funny story about nick uh kind of unrelated to like my content but like uh, i I'll guess not too unrelated because like he he was a, a guy like i'd been watching since he had like less than 100 subs like when yeah. he first started doing the marble hornet stuff uh like I, that was when I first started watching him because he started releasing those around the time that I got into that series. Like I, I knew about it in middle school and I was like, I'll watch this at some point. And it wasn't until like early high school when I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to watch it now. And that's when he started posting all those. And that's how I got into him. And I just kept watching him. And now like weirdly, I it, this whole YouTube thing has brought me to knowing someone as a friend that I watched for like four or five years beforehand, which is oh, fucking I've been through that. crazy. It's it's absolutely weird because you're like, wow, I, I just can't really separate that. But I think getting to know a lot of these people is the same reason I do the series. It's because like you tend to think of creators as like just that you, you think of them as as a, sort of like a wall putting, you know, yourself between, you know, their their content and what they do as a person but the more often i've talked to these people i've just realized they're contemporaries they're people just trying to make a living and you're know, just trying to have a good time doing what they're doing and, and it really brings a new light to the way that you see him because it's just like honest people with with uh usually very good intentions and naked included is is probably one of the coolest people i know right now very you're much best friend. that guy sucks hate that guy fuck that oh. guy oh all right, well, uh, I'll, let, I'll let Nick know about that. I'm sure we'll have like no, a, like a throwdown. Right I'm going to DM right now saying, fuck you, Nick Nocturne. You smell like rats. 
<laughs> Rats. Fuck you, like- Nick Nocturne. You smell like rats. I'm just gonna message him real quick. I'm sorry, Nick. Yeah, he did the double wink thing uh, earlier when I was talking. He was like, oh, look, I'm having quiet on today. He's like, yeah, I saw. Nick's fucking <laughs> voice, by the way, completely off topic. That, I don't know if you've ever met him, IRL, but he talks like that. That's how he actually sounds, and it's fucking astonishing. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, like, I, that's the one thing. Like, I, I've heard him tell stories about, like, people who have, um, talked about him in person and they don't realize it's him and i was like he must have not have said a goddamn thing because you cannot mistake that voice for anybody else no it's beautiful we were actually out at a uh it's completely off topic guys sorry but they're completely uh, out at this one thing i think it was like tmg last year we were hanging out with like him and like fred nudd uh and we, we went to this shitty diner that was apparently some filming location for like the shining they had a burger called the the mark wall burger which was awful um <laughs> I'm not I'm not even joking and this lady like the waitress comes over and she's like wow you have a modified voice you should be on the radio and she's like talking to Nick and we all just look at each other and fucking like just smiling like oh my god that, the, he's the got a beautiful part, voice he does what? it's great but there, there's like um the the Mark Wahlberger part it, like it just made me think of like when I went to VidCon in 2018 we went to Disneyland and uh, yeah. at the cars part, like in California Adventure, there's a restaurant and there's just like a burger called the Kachis Burger, and we were laughing our asses off about it the whole trip. Kachis the Kachis Burger. We just put K in front of everything for the rest of the trip. It was absolutely <laughs> awful. <laughs> that actually sounds. Kaklak. <laughs> well, let's go to the Kakar. <laughs> Kaklak. Okay. Oh, that one's a little bit risque. So back back to wherever the hell I left off with that. I was talking about contemporaries and all that shit. Um, bop, bop, bop. So you'd say mm. people are cool. That's awesome. Great job. Great answer, Quite. I appreciate it. Thanks. Uh, I know. I'm really fucking epic. Wow. You're the smartest person I know. 10 out of 10, if not an 11. Um, I already knew that. Why are you telling me this? I'm, I'm not actually sure if I'm going to be honest. I think I'm just trying to fill dead air. <laughs> 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 All right, so well, I can buddy, I can assuage your worries. I am the best. What's up, buddy, pal? Um, pressures of constantly posting new content. What What would you say like is is your main concern? Are you worried about like whether or not you're going to run out of stuff to talk about? Is that like a is a constant like thing that you got to think about? Because I know there's a lot of people out there who are like I need to be putting videos out, and I'm assuming with your format specifically, it's more of a concern because you have a consistency with your videos. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, I feel like the biggest issue is uh, not being able to think of a topic. Uh, um, thinking of something that I can cover uh, is definitely like the biggest issue I've run across when I'm thinking of like something, I need to make a video, but I don't know what to make it on. So what would you say you do to kind of like uh, assuade that to to actually like uh, find, is is there stuff that you've kind of felt to, to cope with that specific part of uh, your career? I've gotten par- I've gotten past some of that by like just taking a lot of notes and having a lot of ideas in reserve. Like I have like a big list of shit that I could do. Like if I can't think of anything else, like I've got like 10 videos I could react to that. I've got like a bunch of like, uh, random things or that like would make good video topics. So I keep a list now, but before that there would be like, uh, I'd talk to my friends. We'd brainstorm together sometimes if we couldn't think of anything. Uh, there's like certain subreddits that have like good shit uh, to look at just pretty consistently if you do the right if you know where to look and do the right digging that kind of thing so you'd say you just basically build a good safety net and just like find uh not only like uh topics you can talk about just like but other people to kind of help like fill the void if something needs be you yeah know? and sometimes That's if like i'm feeling like a creative void it, it's like just hopping in a call with some friends and like recording something with them like the chemistry just kind of writes itself oh yeah exactly that's that's definitely i think a huge part of what helps me when it comes to streaming, like when I'm talking with friends and I'm working on art, it makes it so much easier because it's just like it all kind of comes out and you don't know what the hell you're going to start talking about. Um, so plans for your future. Is there stuff that you specifically want to do with your channel or is there like other stuff that you're kind of trying to get into outside of YouTube? Uh, outside of YouTube, I really want to like up my Twitch game. Like uh, I want to post at... I really, I really enjoyed TwitchCon and it really like motivated me to just stream more and like find more things to do on stream. Cause I, I like, I have like a lot of things I want to do. I want to 
put more stuff on my second channel because like I enjoyed what I was doing there. It was like really easy content, but it was stuff I liked making that wasn't a whole lot of effort on my end because I wasn't editing it. It was just something I could record, send off, get back, and enjoy the outcome with. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to I want to post to TikTok more. Like I want to do like daily stuff there because it's not super hard, but I feel like it's a it's a Vine like platform which I I really like Vine and I like TikTok more so. That's something. So, what else kind of I stuff do. would you be doing on TikTok then? Like, because yeah, I've seen you no do clue. reviews I just on, know on TikTok one. <laughs> no clue. When I, no, I have no idea what I want to do with TikTok. I just know I want to do something there because I enjoy a lot of like what my friends have put up there and like a lot like when I'm just laying in bed browsing, like I, I, la- I laugh a lot and I just want to do like a maybe like skit stuff, maybe trend stuff. I have no idea. Maybe I'll just post video clips there, expand the portfolio kind of meme. Yeah, that's kind of cool that you're actually thinking about outside of YouTube. So I know a lot of people kind of put all their eggs in one basket, which, you know, scary if the platform decides to do something that's just completely like left turn, you know? Yeah. It's the same thing. Like I have I have Twitter <laughs> that I'm working with. A, oh, no. Sorry. Nick just sent me a, a crying emoji. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's sending me something too. GG, Nick. Uh, he sent me the same one and he sent me a crying cat. Uh, what's the here? I'm just gonna send him the letter L, capital L, L, L. So, bah, 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 bah. no, I was I was talking about Twitter specifically. Um, it's the same thing for me. Like I I basically rely on that platform for my entire career. Like you know, building a website outside of it is definitely a smart idea. Building like other places where people can at least like congregate to your following. Although I think it's a lot easier once you've established yourself to a certain extent. Like you know, if if something ends up happening, you just be like, hey guys, I'm going here, and that's kind of like what happened Absolutely. with a lot yeah. of artists who are on Tumblr specifically, who kind of jump ship after that whole fiasco. <laughs> yeah i mean like when you have like some somewhat of an established base like it's easy it's, it's easier to kind of like pu- push them over to other uh, platforms and whatnot so that like you have like maybe the same people but their eyes are on you in a lot of different places so specifically um getting back into the topic of the future uh what exactly do you think is kind of in in the uh i guess the next step for for commentary stuff like specifically do you think you're going to keep up with that or do you think you're going to kind of start moving into other areas of of uh you know i guess youtube there's a word for it and i'm just completely forgetting tldr what i'm trying to say is do you think you're going to keep doing the commentary stuff or is there other kinds of content that you're specifically interested in like uh getting into via youtube <laughs> I uh, I mean the thing is though like commentary it's it's hard to get out of in that it's such a wide umbrella that you could do a 180 in your content and still technically be commentary to some degree and by exactly. commentary I, I don't mean like in the broadest sense where like oh he's commentating over something I mean like commentary in the context of what is considered the commentary community specifically like uh if you think of someone like Quackity, he's not a commentator by any means, but he's grouped in with commentary channels quite often, even though he doesn't make anything close to it. He makes like gaming videos first and foremost, like Discord shit. I'd like to yes, do this- things I'd like to do like Discord videos because they seem like a lot of fun and honest and like the fan interaction seems like something that is really interesting to me. Um What exactly but, is a Discord video? So like um he's got like I wouldn't want to do something exactly like that, but what Quackity's done, uh, I, I'm a really enjoy his content. But um, what him, what he's done is he has the series called Discord's Got Talent, and like what he does is like him and like two other judges, like YouTubers, like he's gotten fucking KSI and Mr. Beast on for like his most popular one. But what they'll do is like they'll bring in like fans who will like do fan like uh, talent showcases, and then after he gets a bunch of those, he like edits it uh, to look like really cool, and like he adds visuals and whatnot. But it's like a way to incorporate your fans in your videos and like ex- expand like how you uh, <coughs> interact them, interact with them and involve them in what you make. Gotcha. That's, that's actually kind of a neat idea is, is finding ways to use that platform specifically to get you in contact. So like I said, like through my through my experience doing the art stuff uh, specifically, I've actually had a discord that I've, I've been hosting for about two years now. I've met some really interesting creative people and it's like almost a shame when you don't find ways to get out there. I was thinking of doing like zines or something to kind of like feature different artists. Cause I, I absolutely love having other people on to like show Is off that the stuff. That that D- discord zine, 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 zine. zine? I, I would never knew how to say that. Okay, so I guess with that, though, uh, being spoken, uh, I, I have a whole slew of questions that uh, people have actually decided to ask you. Um, I think we've moved out. Congrats on answering questions so well. I appreciate you so far. You've done Thank great. You. 
This is the Appreciate sudden death match. Um, nice. I love dying. Yes, I love dying too. It's a it's a wonderful pastime of mine. I'm still doing it right now. Believe it or not. <laughs> Everybody, <laughs> everybody's like, tactically dying just some faster than others. I stole that from somewhere too. Well, I I, did, I would have thought you were philosophical. There's actually this brilliant point. Um, and this is don't do this, guys. Plagiarizing is bad. Uh, there's this guy who's talking about like I think D and D game campaigns, and he was saying it wasn't Matthew Mercer. It was someone else. He was on about the concept of finding ways to repackage things to to bring your own voice out because he's like you know ideas are never necessarily original it's just the way that you spin them and the way that you put them together in such a way that it becomes off as your own because like a lot of the times he would take like really cool like science fiction uh, stuff that he liked uh, and or like you know fantasy whatever else and then take plots and pieces from a bunch of different things and put them together to make like interesting content and he said the best stuff is the stuff that people have no idea like you know it comes from all your favorite sources and like whatever else i think it's kind of a good send-off because it's like learning to repackage content that you like in your own voice is is a huge part of actually making it out there yeah there's two funny memes like to I say when I say memes, like it's interchangeable with the word things. But uh, two there's like two funny memes, like pieces, little nuggets of wisdom that I've seen uh, that I think kind of fit this pretty well. Like the one is that like every story is the same three or four stories being told over and over again, just in diff- with different yep. presentations. And also, if like if I saw this in a YouTube comment section once, when somebody has to describe a video game as like a mic like a rip off and a mix up of like four different game series, it's an original thing. Because if you have to use so many different IPs to describe the one thing, then it's its own thing at that point, you know? Exactly. And if it's a great experience and people like genuinely enjoy it and it's not like just a legit rip off of one thing, then I don't see how it's a rip off. It's everything. There, there's a reason we have what's called the hero's journey, which is like the core concept of an adventure at, at its base. It's the idea of of like it's it's like a meme. It's like a story meme. Basically, it's like a, how how something functions and how we can like bring people into an interesting conclusion with the actual storytelling. But to, to not get too stocked up, just just, just if you're doing shit, do shit that you love and make sure that you do it with your own voice and make sure you you, you try your best to, you know, bring bring what makes you interesting out there in, in when it comes to any kind of content creation. Q&A. Quite. Ashley has asked you, do you ever feel pressured to reveal your face? The idea of face leaks, face reveals is extremely popular in the current YouTube climate. Do you ever feel pressured to reveal your face by either fans, randoms, people trying to reveal you? Um... Uh, not that there's any face to reveal, but if it, hypothetically, if there was a faith, a face, to some degree, yeah. But I mean, not enough to where like I think I'll let it make a decision for me. I think when it, if I ever choose to reveal the face that doesn't exist, uh, it will it'll probably be on my own terms. Gotcha. So Hinde, this is actually something I was going to ask too. It was it was one of your videos I was watching. They asked, "What's the deal with the props?" I remember one time it was literally a block of wood, and, and in my case, you were holding like I think a light stand or something for like the entire video, <laughs> just kind of whacking it around. Uh, uh, that that was another thing that just kind of happened. Like I started K, like I had a specific prop in mind for one video, and then I had one for another video, and then I ended up just kept kept using them. And I don't always use them, but like when I do. I think it just like gives me an, an extra thing to fiddle with and it kind of helps me sometimes it helps me focus like my speech and shit. Yeah, exactly. I think I think it also helps kind of like divvy up you just standing there and, and doing whatever. It helps yeah. to have kind of some sort of prop humor or at least something going on. Yeah, because I kinda... like I'm on like a completely blank background. Like there's no uh, posters or lighting because I, I can't in the, my current setup. I can't really do any of that because of like just logistic reasons. But um, so it kind of helps that to some minimum extent, but I'd, lo- I'd wish I could do more with the setup I have currently. Gotcha. So Scooch Just the space asked- isn't exactly mine to fuck around with. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Scooch has asked, uh, has gaining traction uh, changed you or your content in any kind of way? Um, I, in, in some ways, yeah. In others, I feel like it was going to change regardless if I gained traction or not. So it's hard to say how much came from getting bigger and how much just came from my taste changing. Gotcha. Um, Anon has asked, how do you stay motivated? Um, that's a hard one. God. <laughs> so sometimes I, I'm not motivated. I just, one thing I heard is less motivation, more discipline. So more that than motivation. 
motivation is temporary and fleeting. Discipline will drag you through it when you fucking want to die anyways. That's kind of what I've been it's, going through this last month specifically. I've yeah, had like a bunch of high powered deadlines kind of like dragging fine, on my yeah, heels. Like, finding the will to do something is a lot less fruitful than I think finding the discipline to do something is. Yeah, it's like, you know, just understanding responsibility and like if you're going to take uh, like, you know, social media seriously, you have to understand it's not it's not daisies. You have to actually be on that stuff. You have to understand consistency is important. And to some degree, you really need to be on the ball, whether or not you feel like it, because you're not always going to feel like it. There's some asshole who decided to con the phrase, I love what you do and you'll never work a day in your life. And that that's bullshit. That motherfucker. Bullshit. Yeah, exactly. Better, better, better phrase is every every job will always become a job. Yeah. And it's like there's nothing wrong with having a job because it's how you make money and it's how you, you know you yeah. network and you make a living and you get out there. And it sucks like working all the time isn't, isn't the best feeling, but you can't really get by in life without working, at least if you want to go places, you know? Yeah. I mean, when I woke up this morning, I like last night I was taking notes. Like I released like a KSI Logan Paul press conference video today. Like this is just an example. Last night I was taking notes. I'm like, I'm going to script it last. Like I said, I'll script it uh, tonight and then I'll get up, record it, edit, upload it same day. I didn't end up scripting it. So instead I got up today and from then from when I woke up to like, Four, it was just nonstop work to make sure I got the video out that day. But I wanted to play Skyrim, but I, I didn't. <laughs> like, yeah, you, exactly. you have to make the choice, not because of motivation, but because you know better. It's the same thing. Like my levels of professionalism, quote unquote professionalism. I literally was throwing the script together probably like 10, 20 minutes before because I was working <laughs> on the stream and I was working on all this other shit that I had to do yeah, for the specific. But you were it's working just, at it is the point. Yeah, it's like you have your deadlines. You have to have goals in mind. And with those goals, you have to consistently try to meet them. And if you can't, you have to yeah. find ways to work around them. Doing shit right is a learning process. You will never get shit right the first time ever. And, and for people who think that they have to have all of it right there, then, you know, it's it's bullshit. Just work on stuff piecemeal. Get what you can when you can do it. And then learn, you know, your strengths and your weaknesses and try to play with that. It's work. It's hard. But it's worth it, in my opinion, you know? <laughs> it's it's more important to do the thing and not do it right than to just not do the thing for fear of, like, not being able to do it. Like, I have friends who, like, want to make things, right? But they're like, oh, I just don't have the time. And I'm like, or I don't have the time. Or, like, I, I, I it's not exactly what I want to do. And I'm like, well, you should do it anyway so that you have some sort of creative output. Like, so yeah, that even you can then, get closer to doing the thing that you want to do. You can see if, if there's, like, any sort of traction with it. Or even if you just had a good time making it. Like, if it's a good out outlet, like you're saying. It's it's just good to to put your, like, heels into the fucking ground and say, all right, today's the day, you know? You can't always wait for something to happen. Yeah, like, when people hear consistency, I feel like they misinterp like they misinterpret it as, like, being motivated to stay consistent. But you need to stay disciplined to be consistent. Exactly. So... That being said, that was a really good answer, by the way. I appreciate all of Thank that. You. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Shocks in Box, or Shocks Box, I guess, rather, uh, asks, how do you maintain the balance between stress and self-deprecation in video making? Like going from stressed out end of the world to the haha funny poo-poo. Uh, I guess just knowing how to separate yourself from it. Like being able to self-deprecate, I feel, should come from a place of being secure in yourself, not as a way of tearing yourself down because you hate yourself. Yeah, I th I think that comes a lot with with the uh, concept of oh, you know, if I if I have that critical eye on myself, it means that anything I do is all right, and it's like it's an unhealthy way of of uh, perceiving because it's okay, ways, yeah. it's it's okay to admit that you have bad qualities, but you also need to accept that there's tons of good stuff about you, and that there's reasons people keep coming back to your content, or that they just want to be friends with you. You know, making fun of yourself all the time. No offense, is one of the most annoying things that I fucking have to deal with in talking to people. I'm like, just how about we just talk about stuff that you like and stuff that you want to do, and you know, the stuff that yeah. makes uh, our conversations fun. You know, it, I'm sure yeah, it transcends I mean, to the video stuff too. Yeah, yeah, like I make a lot of jokes at my own expense, but that's also like comes like with. It's good to have the critical eye of yourself, so long as the critical eye is there to improve, not to tear down. You know, not just yeah, even, to critique, but to also like you know help yourself, build yourself back up, kind of mean. As long as there's also, I think, a good line of, like, what is actually, like, fact and what's humor. Because most times when I hear self-deprecation, I'd rather it be, like, just, aha, uh -huh, I'm kind of being funny. Everybody's got their flaws. A lot of the self-deprecation I do is, like, shit that's, like, over-exaggerated. Like, I, I know it's not to the extent that I'm saying it, or it's maybe it's not even an indication of something that's true. It's literally for the sake of the joke. 
Yeah, it's like you're a character, you know, which which you were you were talking about earlier. It's like you put on a face to uh, to do your videos. And that's just part of like what your branding is. And when you kind of figure out what works for your branding, that's just consistency. But you also need to I mean, look, look at someone like iDubbbz, for instance, who has some very colorful words about himself every every video. <laughs> I I absolutely love every single thing he does with that. I am, you know, as much as as much as it's fucking terrible. Like he's just got a really good sense of like, "Hey, I'm an idiot and people call me this stuff, but I own it," you know. <laughs> it's it's uh it's just all about branding. Yeah, it's like it doesn't control him. Kind of. So, uh, I, I hope that helps, Shocks. Um, socks on fire, and this is spelled S-O-X-X-E, not like actual socks. I, I don't know what the hell they're doing with that. Is is there anything you want to say or any advice you want to give for someone who might want to become a YouTuber slash content creator? Just fucking start already. There you go. That's it. <laughs> like, don't fucking <laughs> wait. Just do it. Don't Don't wait till you have nice camera. Just fucking record yourself on your phone. Just do it. Well, yeah, exactly. There's a, there's a lot of people <laughs> that's who, it, that's it. who want to do the whole like uh, this. This goes for anything. I talk about art a lot, but this is like pretty much the same thing. There's a lot of people who like I need the best uh, Cintiq tablet or I need, you know, this all this other crap. When I started doing interviews, it was about two years ago and I feel shitty because I'm really inconsistent with it. But I, I started with like a really shitty. I think it was like a usb microphone and i did my first interview inside of like an apartment i was moving out of and in i put a laptop on a table and i put like a lamp on the side and i moved my fridge over it was it was unplugged and empty i had to wrap like a sound blanket like it was basically just a regular blanket around the whole setup and <laughs> It looked like basically some sort of shamble shack. Um, and I was inside there sweating, talking to this guy like the whole time. You don't need great shit to start. It's just a matter of like, you know, being intuitive and working with the stuff that you have. And if I'm going to be honest, a lot of like the low uh, quality equipment, like the low level equipment you can get at the beginning works great. There's like some guy I was uh, watching a video on. He's just like, yeah, you can have a shitty camera as long as you got good lighting. It's like totally fine. You know, and even then the lighting um, isn't really that hard to make happen, you know. The microphone I'm using right now is the same blue snowball I got when I was 13. Oh my god, what? You sound great, dude. You sound fucking fantastic. Yeah, like there's not like it, it's fine. Like it, I'm going to until this thing busts, like I, I don't really need to. I audio files might disagree, but one I am not. <laughs> I mean, it's it's an excellent point, though, like what you're making. It's just like it's it's about you as a person. It's about like what you can do with the equipment that you have. And, you know, you don't need professional tier shit to start. Learn what you're you're into and like buying all this crazy expensive stuff up front just for you to realize it's not your thing. is kind of silly. So just like start start with what you got and move forward. Even if that's your hand and your phone. <laughs> Yes, uh, I think Idubs actually. He he also was using his phone with like trash to hold it up, like like on a display. He had like a bunch of boxes and shit behind the fucking. <laughs> yeah, and you I know. mean like phone cameras. Phone cameras nowadays are kind of bomb. Like I won't lie, I recorded a whole ass. Like I forgot to bring my DSLR to the hotel room. My friend was staying at a TwitchCon, so we recorded a whole ass multi-angle uh, video in his hotel room with two iPhones. He had a microphone on him, so we used it. Audio, I feel like, is the one thing that you probably can't skip on because a lot of thing people, a lot of things people will listen to on YouTube is purely audio based. So if you're gonna like buy one thing, get like a decent USB mic. Like blue snowballs are really cheap nowadays, though, so it doesn't even matter. This is a personal pet peeve of mine. Also, if you're gonna do audio, please learn how to edit it properly so there's no hissing in the background when I listen to your video because that shit fucking drives me nuts. It's it's, it's funny. Quentin reviews actually out of all people, he had a uh, really terrible audio quality for like I, I guess the first couple of years that he was doing his stuff. He was it was like really egregious things that you could just like take two seconds to learn how to fix an audacity, you know? And it's like. It's that's all it really is. It's just understanding your equipment and and seeing what your limitations are and and taking the time just to add a little bit of extra polish to your work. You know, that tall guy two thousand one asks, "What is your dream YouTube collaboration?" Ryan Higa. <laughs> <laughs> is he even a thing anymore? Is it, does he actually? Dude, go he's, around he's massive. He's really, still, he's still around. He li like he still like hangs out with people like KSI and uh and like he's can, he's like got legend status. Like, he can do whatever the fuck he wants now because he's still relevant and he's still doing his thing. He's like a Shane Dawson, basically, is what you're saying. Not as big, but, like, he's definitely still around. Like, he's very present. Gotcha. So that's, that's kind of cool. What would, what would you do with him if, if you had that chance? I don't know. I just know I want to. <laughs> <laughs> Cross your fingers, man. I, I think you can do it. 
I'd like to do another thing with Niall as well, because he's the reason I got into commentary, but I, I already have done something with him, so also, I guess that one's fulfilled. Yes, but Niall's, Niall's a cool guy. I, I have a, another mutual with him who was just, like, absolutely gushing about all the nice stuff he's he's done. He's, uh, he's, a, he's incredible. I love Niall. Like, he's a fucking great dude. I saw him... Last time I saw him was in August. I was in the UK for that month, but... um. He stayed at my place while we were going to, uh, like, just for the night. And, like, we went to fucking uh, him, me, James Marriott, and a few others just went out for that night. And, like, he was incredibly, like, um, helpful. Like, he paid for a lot of shit. He was, he's an incredibly nice guy. Yeah. Like like I said, I've, I've heard nothing but good things about, about Niall as a person. Really, really <laughs> interesting. I even love his content, too, so it really helps. And to, to top it off, uh, Sleuthinator has asked, do you ever wash that sweatshirt? Sorry. Um, I wash myself very regularly <laughs> yeah. like very how does that often. go like, is it, you had to like get into like a like a washing machine a washing like, machine homie oh man how's that you look like hang washing out machine they usually hang dry <laughs> gotcha so so ending um ending i guess uh, on on this note is there anything you'd like to say to the people who've uh, supported you thus far like the the people that you know you you uh post videos to regularly um Thanks for tuning in. Th- like whether you're new or old, thanks for like supporting me and shit. You've made like my childhood dream come true, which is something I can never repay. But uh, buy my merch, messed up that shop. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> humble, humble, wonderful things. Now I get you. I'm the same way. I'm always plugging my shit, but it's like it's cool. I, somebody actually asked a question about new merch that you might be doing, so I guess this is a good tie-in for that. Ooh, uh, so the next drop, I don't want to say too much, but, uh, <laughs> it looks fucking incredible. Like, I'm, like, I can't, I don't want to say too much because it'll ruin the surprise, but it looks really good. The next drop does. Hella, hella, keep, keep posted. I'm guessing you're going to post it on your Twitter. It's not going to be for a while because the last one just came out a few weeks ago, but. Gotcha, gotcha. Next drop should be, will be very epic. So keep an eye out, kids. Uh, with that, I guess um, I appreciate having you on, Mister Mister Quite. It's been it's been a wonderful time. Actually, like you've said, some really fucking uh, inspirational, brilliant shit. So really, <laughs> really, uh, really good good interview. Even if you've said some some uh, interesting things, you know. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I appreciate uh, I appreciate your time, homie. No, I appreciate I appreciate having cool people on. It's been good. Um, with that being said, uh, it's been dope talk. I hope you have a wonderful fucking. Uh, Night, quite. Say something that's like a bye word. Bye.